Hi, welcome back to Repair Lawn Most for Profit. In this video, I'm going to go and pick up this Mountfield SP16 Empress, which I've won on Facebook Marketplace for just £10. It's going to be about a 20 minute trip out in the mower mobile or car, if you've not been on the channel before, that's what I call my car, the mower mobile. We're going to go and pick this up. Uh, I think it's got a Tecumseh engine, it hasn't been run for at least 10 years, the guy said, so it could be a bit of fun getting this started. So we'll have a chat about why I've not been on YouTube, I'll uh, let you in on a few things that I've been doing, and what I've been getting up to, and we'll get started with this right now. Right, so I'm back. I've got this lawnmower behind me. I'll just show you that in a second. It's a bit of a faff. It's a dark January, miserable, rainy night. It took me sort of half an hour each way to go and get this, but for £10, I really couldn't turn it down. For anybody who can't understand me, by the way, with my broad Yorkshire accent, there's actually a button on the YouTube video at the bottom, and it's got captions on, and it should uh, try and guess what I'm saying. So if you can't understand my accent, you can now actually click the captions button. So let's have a quick look at this lawnmower. So here we go, I was looking for something a, a little bit retro, which I found I've never actually had one of these Empresses before. And out of choice, I certainly wouldn't have chosen this Tecumseh engine. I think last time I did one of these, I'll put a link to the, the video in the top right hand corner now. Uh, the last time I filmed a Tecumseh video, I think I, I kind of said I'm not doing any more of these ever again. But I just couldn't resist, it's £10 and I can't really do a, a right lot at the minute, because it's pitch black outside, it's night time. But I'll just film around it now, so... We can have a quick look round. What really annoyed me, to be fair, well, it didn't annoy me because he sold it for spares or repair, is he said the recoil didn't work. Um, and as you can see, this isn't kind of retracting or doing anything. So I gave this a little bit of a tip up, if I'm honest, and I got a bit of oil on my garage floor. But this evening, this dipstick in him right, the oil was completely black, and there's loads of uh, stuff around the blade. So I'm hoping I can get this recoil working. If not, um, I'm going to have to buy one that I've just looked on eBay and I think I can get one for about £9. I just wanted to see if any of these cables were working. You can see how bad it is here. I couldn't, you know, I, I kind of, I couldn't resist buying it because it was kind of so bad. I knew it would be a challenge. Um, let's just try this here. This has actually got a rear roller on, you see. This has got a rear roller on and self-drive. So this would be great for someone, if you can get it running, who wants to strike the grass. But that cable, does it move about? Ooh, it all looks a bit not too good. It's got a throttle on, which I doubt. It might move, but yeah, that's working. See this on the cab here? Yeah, that's working. I don't know how, but to be honest with you. But I don't know about the drive one, that's a little bit... I think we'll uh, cross that bridge when we come to it, but it doesn't appear to be moving a right lot, does it? I'll tell you what we'll do, we'll just take this uh, recoil off here and we'll just have a quick look at this just before tomorrow morning. I can't resist you see, I, I want to get started so let's just have a quick look at this. So I've had a lot of uh, emails and questions just asking where I've been if I've stopped doing the mowers nothing like that at all. I just want to um, just be up front with all my subscribers because I think I'm at about 9,600 the last time I looked and the messages uh, I've had have been uh, you know greatly received by me I really appreciate that but the fact is um, I, I have been a litho printer since I've been 19 years old and uh, the last four months five months I was made redundant so I've been trying to work my notice and find uh, employment as well so I've luckily I found a, a job in a purchasing department reviewing musical products which is something I love I'm into all my music I play in a brass band for those of you who didn't know so I have another job but it doesn't start till February so where I've been is I've actually been filming YouTube videos I actually have a second channel called Stampy's Random Reviews and Tutorials I'll link to that in the top right hand corner of the screen I can't remember it's that one it's that one up there you can go there if you give me a subscribe on there once you've watched this video of course I'd appreciate that as well of course this is my main channel but there's there are other things I like filming and reviewing and uh, doing little tutorials for so if you could give me a subscribe on there and watch a few of those vids that would be great so it's not that I haven't been doing any videos I've just been boosting that channel a little bit while the winter months have been here and I've only had a small amount of time in between looking for employment and all the stress that's gone along with that so I, I have to be honest it's been uh, it's been a lot more stressful than I thought it was going to be 
um, especially with having two young kids as well and uh, everything else to pay for as everybody else has you know I'm not, I'm not complaining it's the way life is isn't it we all uh, get dealt this now and again but uh, certainly not asking for sympathy but for all the people that have been asking where I've been and what I've been doing basically I've been trying to sort that out first and I've been filming other uh, shorter and smaller videos from my other YouTube channel which I'm trying to build up so just to clear that up I've not stopped doing moles or anything like that you know we'll get this recoil back off here now um, we'll just have a quick look at this on the bench now. I just can't resist, you see. But thanks very, very much to everybody. I, I really uh, I do appreciate the uh, the messages I've had and the, the support and people asking if I'm coming back doing the mowers. Um, that does mean a lot to me, that, so thanks very much. By the way, I haven't got a new video camera. I've just got a wide-angle lens on my original one, so leave me a message in the, the comments section just throughout, probably when we go outside, tell me if it looks any better or any worse or if it looks distorted or anything. If there's any problems, let me know down there in the comments section. I can just quickly take this off and we'll go back to how it was before. Right, let's just zip this off here. Shouldn't really be doing this now. I should get changed and, you know, put some old clothes on and stuff. But I just can't resist having a look. There's a lot of grass around the bottom of this blade, but normally it would still retract, so... I'm guessing this recoil is broken. What one thing I will mention actually, if you go looking at a lawnmower and it looks really good, and someone says, "Oh, the pull cord snapped," and it's in here, it's probably because the recoil is completely broken. People cut them off. So let's have a quick look in here. Everything just looks really old. I said this hasn't been run for around 10, 15 years. If you look inside here, it all just looks really stiff. And there's a lot of cord hanging down here still. I don't really get how this is going to retract. I'm, I'm thinking the spring might have gone. Maybe if we just work this a bit, give this a spray up with WD, maybe it'll start retracting again. Let's give it a go anyway. I don't think so. Let's give it a go. Right, let's just give this a quick clean up in here. I'm just going to spray this all just in here and see if it makes any difference. I'm not sure what difference it's going to make, but I'm going to fill this up. Just got this WD-40 today, by the way. One of my uh, kids' bedroom doors was squeaking, so my wife bought it, even though I've got loads of it. I said we needed some more. You can never have enough, can you, for cleaning these lawnmowers up, so... Just give this a real good old spray around in here. I'm not even sure what good it's going to do, but let's just do it anyway. It'd be great if I could get this working, so I don't want to spend any money on this. Look at this, it's moving a bit better, isn't it? Let's try and get this right out. Yeah, it goes back in. I just don't think when the pull cord's been fitted, there's a lot of slack on here, isn't there? I'm not sure if it's when it's been fitted. I'm not sure if that pulls far enough. I just don't think the uh, the actual cord is long enough. I'll show you what I mean. I'm just looking at this Tecumseh recoil and I didn't notice that they've only got one, one thing that pulls out. See this? It pops out there. See that? There's only one. Didn't know that on there, but it's metal. It's a good solid part. Now I don't actually think there's anything wrong with the coil. I just don't think this rope's long enough. Watch. This comes out and retracts, but that's the whole length of the rope. It's probably about a metre. So I think it's like I do chest exercises, doesn't it? I think if I get a longer rope, I don't think there's much going that. It's certainly freeing up. How can you start it really? You'd only have that much to start it. I don't know. Might be long enough. Probably just change it anyway, but the actual thing isn't broken, it retracts, so that's a great start. That's great because I've really, really been a Yorkshireman, of course, I didn't want to spend anything at all, I didn't want to pay for the lawnmower, you know. But, um, that's great, that starts, I've not demonstrated that enough. I'm going to put another card on there, I'm going to make it a little bit longer, so it makes it a little bit easier to start. So I, I have to admit, of all the mowers I've done, I don't think I've ever replaced a actual rope on a Tecumseh one. So, this is going around clockwise, so if I pull this out as far as I can get it, you can see the rope ends there. So I need to pull that out. And what I need to do really is I'm going to have to turn it a few more turns to get a bit more tension in this to actually get a bit more rope in it. So I'll just grab a clamp, I've got a clamp on here. I'm going to clamp that. It's always difficult when you're working against a spring. It's never much fun really. So I'm just going to clamp that off there. And I don't have any great tools. I've said before, I've only got, you know, pretty cheap stuff to be honest with you. But I get by, you know. 
you don't need a lot of expensive tools to start doing this. Um, so I'm going to clamp that so it doesn't spin. I'm going to find a knife. And I'm just going to cut off this old rope here. You can see the knot is there. I'm just going to cut this off. And I'm going to pull this out. Um, I've got the handle as well. So I'm going to hook that out of there. I'll do that off camera, just get some uh, long nose pliers and I'll just pull that out there and I'll reuse this handle but this is only probably about three foot long so I'm going to put one on about the length of my bench, I'm probably going to put one on that's about, I don't know, six foot long, probably twice as long, you can always cut it off at this end of course, re-thread the handle so for now I'm going to make it too long. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some pull cord rope which I've got here, which I've had for about five years. There's, uh, how much do you get of this? 100 metres of this. And um, shameless plug, all these things are listed on the website at repairlawnmowsforprofit.com. Recall rope and handles and everything like that. I'm going to just take some of this off here. And what I always do is I've shown on loads of videos. It's just burn the end. Shouldn't really do it with plastic gloves on. I get a lot of questions about these plastic gloves. Why do you wear plastic gloves? You know, just get your hands dirty. It's not that, it's that I get a vitiligo, which takes the colour out of your skin. So I get patches of white all over my skin, which is fine in January, but if you get a bit of colour in your skin, it doesn't look great in summer. You know, I'm not overly vain, but I don't, you know, I will try and take care of my skin to some degree. So that answers that question. So I'm going to undo this clamp. Just holding on to this actual recoil here with my thumb. It needs a bit of strength. And I'm going to try and go around this a couple more times to get quite a bit more tension into this far as I dare, it's quite difficult to do, but I want to make sure it goes far enough I can get enough rope on it, it'll retract enough rope so I've been round a couple more times there I'll need to line this hole up here and thread it through here, see this here it's like a little notch in there, that's where it goes through I need to line up with that one with the square there so I can get it to go around a couple more times and then clamp it all in position really difficult, it's starting to slip so let's just clean that off a little bit and I don't think I'm going to get it further than that it kind of locks out actually I think yeah, that's as far as it wants to go, that's the, that's the maximum so I'm going to find I just, want it round, I just want it round a little bit further just to there so I can just get it in there I can just get it one more bit further, that would be great like that. And I'm going to clamp this off again. Right, a little bit of fiddling there. I could have cut that out of the video, but I like to show um, exactly the struggles I have, so I'm going to push that in there. Like that. And you see, because I've burnt the end, it makes it easy to get through. So I'm actually going to tie this off. I'm going to put a couple of knots in here, and I'll pull it tight with some pliers when I'm done. Make sure it's not going to pull out. You don't want this catching on anything inside the actual recoil. So I'll get it as flat as you can. And I'm going to kind of guess with this rope. I don't think it's had a full length of rope on it in a while. So I'm probably going to cut this off at about, I don't know, about six foot. I'm going to certainly make sure it's long enough anyway. And just see how much it actually recoils. So, sorry I'm out of camera shot, but I am just going to cut this off over here. Just grab this lighter a bit here and just burn this end off as well. And this is where that pull cord handle is going to fit on. One thing I'll say about this is you must put the handle on, even if you're not sure the length's right, put the handle on here, always put this handle on here before you take the clamp off, otherwise if there's enough tension on the spring it'll just take all this right in, it won't stop. So that's like a, an error you learn early on. So make sure you get the actual handle on. So. I'm going to reuse this uh, actual handle here, it's quite a nice one that isn't it, it's a bit better than the uh, normal ones, look at that. It'll still break your fingers if it kicks back but um, if you get some long nose pliers in here and grab this, you can normally just get these out. Sometimes can be a bit of a fiddle but they're not too bad. Don't ever bin these by the way, see that there, that didn't go too badly did it. Don't ever bin these by the way, you don't want to be buying these, anything that you're going to bin, anything you're going to scrap, take these off. I'll just try and get this actual... Uh, around the corner here. So I say I might have to cut this off again yet. 
Well, at least I can try and retract this pull cord and just see if it's okay. I'm just going to put a knot in there. One just do for now, like that. And then I'm going to undo this clamp, keeping hold of the tension of it with my thumb. And let's just see how much cord it actually recoils. I'm hoping it takes in a little bit more than it did before. So I'm going to hold the rope and let it just take it up. There's no kinks in it. Well, it doesn't take in a real lot, but the cord's long enough. Should be long enough to start this motor up. These Tecumsehs normally start fairly well once they're all set up and running right. They're normally easy to pull over as well. So, yeah, in fact, it's get, it is getting better all the time, this recoil. See how much more I'm getting on there now? So, yeah, I've got about that much slack. I, I can pull it to, if I start there, yeah, I've got all that. And that's definitely working. So that's that uh, first job done. So tomorrow, when as soon as the sun comes up at like quarter past six, I'll be out in the garden trying to fire up this uh, mount field. I won't really. I'll probably get up about nine and watch a bit of cricket. But um, yeah, that's great stuff. That's saved me uh, around eleven pound. I think they are nine, ten, eleven pound, something like that. So there's a little bit, maybe too much on there, but we'll see. But I've definitely got enough to fire this up and one thing I'll say is make sure that this little thing sticks out on here whichever more you've got if it feels like it hasn't got any compression see how this little part sticks out here this little metal bit right at the top now at 12 o'clock I've had mowers where that hasn't stuck out before and you've pulled the mower over and thought it didn't have any compression and it's because this little part didn't actually catch on the actual engine and I'll show you exactly what I mean this is the same kind of setup on, on any mower but what happens is that metal part actually um, pops out and it catches on this cup and then it turns the cup in turn which is great this is actually not a bad design at all because everything's metal the part that sticks out is metal and it catches on these whichever one it wants to catch on and it turns the whole thing round so if it doesn't pop out you can kind of pull the mower over I've, I've had one before and you pull it over and you think oh it's got no compression none at all um, and it's just because it hasn't caught on this and the engine actually hasn't turned so that's really uh, a real good tip. It doesn't happen very often, but if it does happen, you can find a lawnmower, if you, especially if you see a listing on eBay or wherever, and it says, oh, I don't think it's got any compression, it's been sat for a long time. Just check and make sure that this actually pops out and it actually turns the actual engine. So let's stick this recoil back on. It goes out from that side, the actual cord. So if we line it up there, I think that's right. Normally pull from the right hand side. I can look back on the video and find out if I wanted to, but I'm pretty sure that at some point this cord snaps and someone's managed to fit probably uh, the longer half of the bit that snapped somehow. So we'll just put all these in here, just finger tight, and we'll zip these back up. And uh, it makes it worth getting up for now tomorrow, doesn't it? You know, when you wake up tomorrow, I can try this lawnmower. It's guaranteed it's going to rain. You know, now I want to be outside. It's guaranteed it'll pour down all day. So. I hope not. I need to um, pop these back in here and also the dipstick for the oil is kind of not in the actual engine itself so I don't really want to try and start it up like that unless I want my fen fence painting outside <laughs> so let's just snip this back up there we go have a look at this. You can see this actual engine recoil here. This actual engine cover here seems a little bit um, slack. You might want a couple of bolts in there. But it turns over, and I've got some compression there. So in the morning, as soon as it gets light, I will be out here. I'll just try and put this engine oil dipstick back in here. See why that's not sticking in there, right? I just hope everything isn't bent. And we'll give this a go in the morning. I'm going to put some petrol in here. Even though it hasn't been run for years, I'm going to do what I always do. There's a little bit of something in there. I'm going to drop some in and we'll just try it. It's not started for at least a decade, he said. So, let's see if this height adjuster works as well. Yeah, it's actually got the height adjuster on. Right, so we'll take that outside in the morning and we'll give this uh, old Tecumseh engine a little workout see if we can get this running so as predicted the following morning it's absolutely pouring down which doesn't make great for filming um, 
outside of course with the camera but inside it's really loud in the garage has anyone else got one of these flat roofs like this because I think about five years ago I had the world's worst garage roof fitted it's, it's dreadful it's like really thin I had to put loads of wood above it to hold it all up and I keep thinking of getting one of these flat roofs but that look at that flat roof that's been like that since he bought that roof it's been probably I don't know seven eight years it's always got a big puddle in there has anyone else got a flat roof like that that's actually really good they don't actually bow down like that. Leave me a comment in the comments section. So I'm going to nip in the garage. We'll go and have a look at this more anyway. We'll go and do a few things with it. Let's just hope this uh, rain pulls up a little bit later on today. Right, so I've just got this set up. As you can see on the bench here. What I want to do really is drain the old fuel out of it using this extractor up here. But what, what you can normally do, if there's not much in it, is you can normally get to this actual bolt here. Under here. These little like bolts on the bottom of these calves on these circumstances are like soft like cheese and then the last time I took one of these off and put it back together I kind of got it cross threaded a little bit if I'm honest and I want to be really careful with that but there's no room under there to put anything under so I can just undo this and drain the fuel out as I said there isn't much in there so I'm just going to get out exactly what I can I'm just going to get out as much as I can using an extractor and I might even just crack this open outside just put a little rag under it and let the actual remainder just actually come out because I want to see what comes out of this carb if you've seen a previous video of mine on the Tecumsehs when you prime it there's actually a little hole in the back of it and if both of these screws aren't in the carb it doesn't prime believe it or not so if you've got one off your lawnmower or your lawn tractor and you're priming it and you're wondering why you're not getting any prime it's because you haven't put these screws back in that's one uh, essential thing to do with these so I'm going to take as much as I can out I'm going to take it outside and we'll try and start it you can tell there's a problem with oil on this it's all stuck to it there's oil absolutely everywhere I'm not sure what's going on with this actual thing here but if you look down the back of here as well you can see how much dirt and oil there is so I'm just going to spin this lawnmower around and I'm just going to manually just screw this dipstick back in as well I'm going to take an 8mm socket here, just put it on here. I'm just going to undo this a little bit. As I say, I'm, I'm not sure why it's, why it's too short. I'm not sure if this recoil cover's sat up too high. You can see it does move about a lot. I don't think there's anything particularly wrong with this actual engine oil dipstick bin there. I just don't think that this recoil cover at the minute fits on exactly how it should. So I'm going to push that down and nip that back up just so it's at least in the right position there you can see now that that's in that hole there at least I've got something that I can try and start up so I'm going to get my extractor take all this old fuel out of here it's probably been there at least 10 years as I've said I can't even find the date really on this lawnmower I don't think so look at this sticker at the back here service sticker there we go Mountfield Empress serial number 84103 made in England no date that's annoying. So I've just raised this mower up at the front here under these little two boxes here. I have disconnected this spark plug lead by the way. You must do that with every repair you do. No matter what you're doing, just do that first. Keep yourself safe. We just going to pump this. Take as much of this out as I can. It really smells bad. Definitely old fuel. Just poke this around a little bit. And we've got a lot more chance of getting this started if I can get any old fuel out of this tank. And also really at the bottom of this carb. Although I do suspect that this carb's going to want to come off. And it's going to want to serve it. Yeah, there's just little bits coming out now. There's not much else I can do there. The problem with these Tecumsehs is getting this carb off involves kind of taking all these parts off. Sometimes there's a big guard around the exhaust and everything unbolting it from the back it's really difficult and time consuming to get off just takes a lot longer than like a Briggs classic engine which is why I don't like these for actually repairing but they're great when they're running they always pull over real easy and they run really nice when you can get these running so I've got as much of that fuel out of there as I can for now I might just take this out as I've said and crack this bottom bowl here and just drain what I can onto a rag so hopefully you can see under here there's just this little little bit of this bolt sticking out, I'm not sure if, even if you can see but if you get like a, a ring spanner and point it upwards like that I'm going to actually try and undo this that's it, that's undone now 
I'll just let this fuel run out of here onto this towel, not the ideal way to do it but I wanted all this out of this card, there shouldn't be too much in it we've drained it all out of the tank, they can only be what's left in the bowl and a bit that's left in the fuel pipe here so you can see now it's just starting to stop as well so that's not too bad and I know when I fill this up with fresh fuel it goes right from this tank down this fuel line and into the cab so when I'm trying to start this lawnmower I know I've got fresh fuel I'm quite glad that's drained out there sometimes you can open that up and what you'll find is nothing comes out at all which means it's all really gunked up so that's good news for me there you go you can probably see a better example here of this I've actually backed this off now I don't want to take this off if I can help it I don't like the actual um, bowl gaskets on there I find them really difficult to get on sometimes if they're really old so I don't want to take this cab apart if I don't have to but I have backed this off and I've got all the old fuel out right from the cab right through to this tank so I want to tighten this back up now put some fuel in it and we will take it outside so I know everybody will be thinking when's he going to start it up and they'll be skipping <laughs> bits of the video to think is he ever going to start this lawnmower up but now I've got some fuel I can get in some fresh fuel here and I can nip this back up we might have a chance of this actually firing up one final thing to mention on this is when you tighten this back up don't over tighten this as well because you can even kind of stop the thread at the top and it'll break the top of the thread off when you try and thread it back if you take the whole thing off you'll never get it back on you can probably just see even there just using a spanner how it's kind of marked all the flats on this actual bolt so just be really really careful with these as I said they're not that easy to get hold of the parts either if you've got one that's complete I would um, do everything you can at first apart from taking it apart to get the lawnmower running right it's still raining but um, I think what I'll do is I'll set my camera up here and I'll just take myself outside and I'll just put some fuel in this and we'll see if we can get this actual thing to fire up right so I'm going to reconnect this spark plug lead it's got a primer on I've no idea if it primes or not so Let's just put this back on. I've checked the blades on tight. I know it's got some oil in it. So it has a choke lever on, so let's put it on choke. Let's, let, you know, let's prime it anyway. Let's trust that this, this primer works. I doubt very much if it'll start. Let's uh, have a go and see what we get. I've just disconnected this spark plug lead, I want to show you this under here See all this, it's like a almost like a plastic bag that's been shredded all the way around here So I'm going to get a knife in there I'm just going to cut all this off I don't think Stan trying to start this mower with all this wrapped around here is really open So I'm going to get a knife, I'm going to trim all that off Okay so now we've had this running and it's uh, decided to not start again. I'm going to be a bit brutal with this I'm going to get a jet wash on this which I wouldn't normally do because I don't like taking the paint off too much on the top of these but I'm going to get my pressure washer and I'm going to wash all this off here because I'm going to take this whole engine to bits I'm going to give this a full service up the carb and everything because it's just not running as good as it should I want to check the flywheel key as well because it's not easy to pull over and um, we'll just take a few bits off this but for now I'm just going to clean this up before I put it back in the garage so this isn't the ideal way to do this really but I wouldn't um, normally want to get water around near the cab and everything but because I'm taking the whole thing apart it's not going to matter too much I'm going to clean everything off make sure it's dry and put it back but it's in such a dirty oily mess I just want to give this the quickest clean I can really
so I've timed that well most of the time I was out there, it wasn't raining too bad now it's going to start pouring down again but it um, was a brutal way of cleaning a lawnmower that but you can see here how much dirt I've got off that and if it's only you know, a £10 lawnmower really let's be honest if you're taking it all apart and you're going to service the car but change the oil and change all the fuel and everything what difference does it make? at least that when I bring it in the garage as I'm forced to do today can you hear that? Um, at least I can work on something that's reasonably clean the main thing that's concerning me is that it obviously started and ran and then stopped which could suggest a car blockage but it ran for a good while it revved up and down by the way because I was just testing out this actual throttle on here no other reason I kind of wish I'd just left it on full throttle but it did kind of stop abruptly maybe it just got overheated so the thing that's bothering me most is this recoil covers wavering about it's quite difficult to pull over so I'm going to check the flywheel key We'll take all this carb off the air filter, the petrol tank, recoil cover, we'll have a look at the ignition on it, probably take the exhaust off as well, make sure all, all that's not blocked off, and we'll change the oil and do everything we need to do to service this Mountfield Empress 16 SP. Well, just at the minute it's absolutely pouring down, as you can probably hear it bouncing off the roof. It's half past ten, I'm going to go make a cup of coffee, I'm going to do Popmaster with Ken Bruce. Right, back, nine points on Popmaster, I'm useless at that. Um, back my coffee mug, it says uh, they didn't have my name, look I got that from Florida, look Orlando I love that, I love all Disney stuff and parks and all rides and things like that so um, I'm going to take all this apart in a second, let's drink this cup of coffee I'm going to take the air filter off, I'll take this petrol tank off here, I'll take this whole recoil off we're going to have a look inside here at this ignition coil and I'm, I'm quite keen to look at the actual flywheel key in here as well so we'll have a look at that so yeah, apparently uh, now and again I get people donate things to me. I, apparently um, years ago I must have set up a, a button on my YouTube homepage that says donate and people uh, send me like five, ten pounds, twenty pounds sometimes just to put towards the channel. I just wanted to point out that I have actually used some of that money buying that wide angle lens. I have a Canon HFS 200 video camera for anybody, anybody who's interested. It's a few years old now, but I actually uh, saved up that money and over Christmas bought myself a wide angle lens. So if anyone wants to donate me like 10 grams so I can go out to Florida and get another really nice mug, go on now and leave me something. So um, let's just drink this coffee and we'll get this off of here. Has everybody seen Mix Mowers channel by the way? M I C K S, Mix Mowers. He's brilliant, he does a video nearly every day. He knows loads and loads and loads of things about all these mowers. He's got his little adult channel. If you've not been over there, have a look at Mix Mowers channel, it's real good. I think he's probably uh, approaching 2,000 subscribers now, but I'm sure over the summer he's going to get up about four or 5,000, and I'm sure within a year or so he's going to surpass this little channel. He's a great channel, he's, he's done loads of little stuff like this, so I'll give Mix Mowers a uh, a look as well so let's get the few bits taken off this mower right so we'll start at the top here just two little catches on here for these filters here to push them in like that make sure you might have to slide something under here this whole thing should hopefully just lift off it's always a bit fiddly when you've got something that's kind of not been apart for a while everything's really stiff let's get that off here let's look at that there obviously that's covered in oil that won't be helping it start and it's a little bit wet due to the uh, really poor wash that I gave it so that's the, basically the whole air filter off this bolts on here to the back of this car Let's see if I can spin you around a bit so you can see see these two bolts in here there's actually one there and one round the back where you can't see we need to get this whole part off then this whole air filter kind of box comes off and you can get to the car and take it off so really what we need to do is just get something down the back of there and unbolt this first which is a little bit difficult to do you can take the petrol tank off on these which is great like that so you can get in a little bit easier and you can actually get a little screwdriver down the back of there as well and we can take that off what my plan is with this is to leave the actual petrol tank and all the fuel line connected unbolt the car carbon just keep it level and I'm going to um, just dump all this fuel into a container because most of this should be clean as well so once I've got this undone here I'm just going to take it off and keep it level and I'll probably just pull this fuel line off at the back a little bit fiddly to get in screwdriver that's probably too long but you can actually get if you get the right socket you can actually get a little socket on here you can see like this there I'm sure what size that one is let's just see if it'll 6mm fit let's go to the other side easier if you can get the actual socket on here I think it's quarter inch if I remember right yeah I can get a quarter inch socket on there take that one off and I can actually get this in here and 
don't actually have to use a screwdriver. You can use a cross-headed screwdriver to undo this, which I may have to do for the back one. This takes these two parts out of here. So once you've got it started with a actual socket, it's kind of sometimes just easier just to get a screwdriver in like that. You can see there. You can just turn all this out of here. I said outside as well that these actual screws have to go in the back of the carb for the carb to prime. If you don't actually have them in the back, it won't prime and your lawnmower won't start. So I'm going to keep these here. I have a metal magnetic tray here. I'm going to keep these in the right order. I'm going to put this actual tool zone uh, logo towards me. I'm going to put this one at the left hand side so I know that, that it came from there and then the one at the other side in front of it. But I'm pretty sure they're similar or the same, I'm hoping they are, but I don't want to put these back in the wrong order. So I'm going to see if I can get in down the back of here and just get this back one off. A real fiddly pain of a job to do this compared to the Briggs ones, as I've said. But I'm going to get a screwdriver down the back of here and I'll undo that one. Obviously it's real difficult to film. I don't have many special tools, but I do have a 150 piece Halford socket set there, which I've had. And if you buy one of these and keep the receipt, if anything goes wrong with the parts, anything don't hold any sockets on anything they are lifetime guarantee so I've had that probably about 10 years maybe 8 years something like that and now and again for jobs like this it's really really handy so it's got a load of little bits of kit you can see there I can just get in with that because I've got the correct tool and I can just undo this part this is why if you look at the website repel almost for profit I have a, a complete guide to actually repairing and selling lawnmowers for profit from home and I, this is why I specifically recommend always starting with the Briggs & Stratton 35 Classic Engine because you don't have to fiddle about, you don't need any special tools, any extenders or anything. You can literally take the whole thing apart in like five minutes without having to fiddle about with things like this. So sometimes it's great to have some nice tools as well, but this isn't the ideal machine to start repairing lawnmowers for profit at all. But it's a miserable January day and I like doing things like this, it'll be great when we get this all cleaned up and we get the whole thing up and running, it'll be worth everything. So obviously there's not going to be a massive amount of profit in this, I wouldn't have thought, but I wanted to do this because there's still quite a lot of come sale on those around nowadays, people still like um, like using them and if they've had one a long time they'll always look for a second hand one so I'm hoping by doing this video I'm at least helping somebody out. So I'm going to take that screw out of there and see there. Let's just see if they're the same. I think they're the same size, aren't they? Look. See there? Yeah, pretty sure they're similar. So, let's just take a look in here. Yeah, and as you can see, I'll show you in here in a second and show you that it's just not priming properly. And it won't do, of course, without the screwing. I'll show you exactly what I mean. Hopefully you can see there's a tiny little hole in this car, but below my finger there, that tiny little hole, and as I press this primer bulb here, even though it's still connected up to the fuel line, there should still be some fuel in this, even if I hold this actual petrol tank up here. You can see nothing primes through there. So, as I said before, I can't remember which side it is, I think it's the far side, but on some of these uh, Tecumseh cars, if you don't have the screw in, it won't actually prime, which is all a bit weird. And it took me a, a good while to work out why it wouldn't, but... I don't know if this will even prime with the screws in because obviously this isn't running right there could easily be a blockage with a cab now we've had it running a little bit so let's just try and prime that now put the screws in and I still don't see anything coming back through this hole here when you prime that now there should at least be a few little blobs of fuel coming out there and I don't see anything at all so Just lifting that tank up there just to see if I can get anything to come through. No matter how much I press this primer bulb, I don't see any fuel coming in through here. It's a little bit wet, but there's nothing visible that's pumping through. Of course, if you're not getting this, actually priming this lawnmower properly, you're not going to get this lawnmower to start. You're not going to get any fuel through to this plug. It certainly won't fire up. So to give myself better access, what I'm going to do next is I'm just going to go around here. I'm just going to take this recoil off just so I can see inside here a bit better and I can get to some of these parts a little bit easier. So we'll just see what we can unbolt from here. This is uh, 
don't know what's happening with all this here, why this is bolted through here. It's obviously moving about, and it's not correct the way it is, so I'm going to unbolt some of these bolts here. I'll just take some of these out, and we'll just sort out this mess and make sure that this is bolted properly. I think actually looking at the back there, that's actually split on the back there, can you see? There's actually a little split in the back of this recoil, which is a shame. So, I'll have to take this off manually and we'll see if we can do anything with that before we put it back. I think this is why it's all moving about as well. So even though I've got this actual thing retracting I'm still not too happy with the way that all this moves about. I'm really not too sure what these two parts are doing in here either because they're not they're certainly not holding anything on. Um, and everything's just really slack so let's just see what we've got on the back side there. Let's just take that one off there. Put a socket on then that'll help. Might make a difference. Take that out there. Keep all these parts in my little metal tray as well. Let's see if we can get in there and get that one off. Just about. Hopefully. I'll have to remove the engine oil dipstick at the far side. Pull that out. This whole thing should should come off. And there we go. Just all moves out of the way. You can see I've now got access. If I take that off there, we can take that off. That's not attached to anything. I can actually set this aside, but it's actually split. Can you see there at the back? Don't think that's supposed to be like that, so we'll have to try and do something with that or get another part. And at least we can get in and clean all this mess out of the. Uh, and I can see right inside this lawnmower now. It gives me just great access to get in and have a look at what wants cleaning up and what the problems might be with it as well. So I'll take my camera off the tripod and I'll show you inside here as well. You can see just how much dirt we've got in here and these cooling fins and things like this, these cooling fins, if they get really blocked up it can cause overheating issues with these lawnmowers. Let's have a look at the actual uh, ignition coil as well. And what I can do now, now I've got this actual uh, impact tool as well, this Ryobi one's normally powerful enough. This is a Ryobi 1, um, I think it's a 1, yeah 1 plus thing, it's only 18 volt but normally it's uh, an impact driver so it's got enough zip to take this off without actually spinning the blade at the bottom make sure you've got this removed by the way and I can zip this off and quickly look at the flywheel key once I can get this actual flywheel up and out of the way and that's great because normally I'd have had a, like a block of wood under the blade trying to hold it with my knee outside and undo this this is a really uh, good bit of kit as well so in fact I'll link to that in the description of this video but yeah just a little bit of a mess so I think what we'll do to start is I'll do what I said I was going to do. I'm going to take all these parts off, probably the exhaust and all these parts here, and we'll take this carb off and have a real good look at it. But before I do anything at all, I'm going to get my phone, I'm going to take loads and loads of photographs of where these springs go. So for anybody who's taken apart a Tecumseh engine and they don't know where the springs and linkages go, if this video at this point is helping you out, leave me a comment and click like, please. So make sure these little bolts are in there. I'm going to keep these in here now, these screws this part's on here. This is always a little bit of a strange kind of setup along the top of here. You can see little things that you might forget like this actual ignition coil wire hooks under here. Just look at all the dirt in there. Let's just have a look at that. You can see all this that lifts off here. I want all that clean. I've got an air compressor to do that with so I'll loosen that and I'll probably just take the flywheel off, take the ignition coil off I might even take the head off but I don't like doing that in case you break the head gasket. So let's take off this exhaust here, we'll unbolt that. To do that, what you need to do is you need to bend these little clips here, you see these here? If you just get a little flat headed screwdriver and a hammer and just tap these then you can get, actually get access to these bolts and take it off. Make sure the exhaust isn't hot of course. So we'll start with the exhaust and that will give us even more access to get in here to remove this carb. I just usually get a flat headed screwdriver like that, just tap, they're only really brittle these. Try not to break them off, so just move them out of the way, just enough so you can get a actual socket in here. You can see how that's moved out of the way. I think they're probably 10 mil, so we'll take them off as well. Hopefully they'll fit. That's not a 10. It's going to be slightly bigger than a 10. Higher than a 10? An ace? No. Right. Okay. 11. I'll take that off there. You can see 
how invaluable these little tools are as well. Didn't want to break the head off with that so this has actually got uh, adjustable torque on as well so if you press it a little bit it spins a little bit, if you press it a lot it spins a lot. It's also got a light on the front there for when you're working in uh, dark conditions. Sounds like an Alan Partridge demonstration doesn't it? So there we go that's the exhaust off. Put that to one side, don't lose any parts and that gives us a bit more access once again to get in here. So to remove the carburetor what I've got to do well there are two ways of doing it and I always kind of make a hard, hard work of this but I could undo these two parts here and then try and get down the back here and there's a, a bolt there and there but I think if I remember rightly what I did before the easy way to do it is just to unbolt this part here that actually goes to this inlet here that actually goes into the head if I unbolt that and leave all this bit together I should be able to leave all these parts together and still get the ball off here and be able to serve this this because it's real difficult to get down the back of here and get these little bolts out of here so for now I'm going to take these parts off here and they want a really good clean up all this I don't really like taking it off if I don't have to but I want to get in here and have a really good look at this carb and make sure it primes properly before we put this back together so I'm going to undo these two parts next and hopefully this whole thing will pop off and I've just reminded myself then that I must take some photographs. Right so let's take these two parts off here and I really slowly just take these off here pop these again in this metal tray the ones at the top that one goes at the bottom and just for reference while I'm filming this the bottom one is shorter than the top one because if you forget you could waste yourself a little bit of time, you can see I've taken these two off the bottom one was the shorter one and the longer one was the top one I'm kind of saying that for my own benefit and then there's a couple more in here as well actually, there's a bracket here one here, one at the bottom, there's a couple more to take off under here that I've missed, so I'll take that off as well you can probably see this whole thing wants to come off now and move away so what I've got is the linkages that are still connected which are a bit of a pain and I've got a little bit of fuel leaking out so what I need to do now is I need to disconnect these linkages and unfortunately I'm going to have to tip this cab so I'm going to put something underneath here just to catch any old fuel. So what I've decided to do is take off this top bracket here and see which way around it goes. I'm just going to quickly take that off, keep these screws as well and hopefully I can get in a little bit easier I can get this actual carb off without removing all these spring linkages here and you can see there I've actually got one linkage I'm going to need to remove underneath there and I can get this whole thing off you can probably see there there's only the one linkage so it's a little bit of a pain if I just try and keep this cloth underneath I can actually move this one out of the way I want to just unhook this one linkage from there like that and I've now got this carb off, if I keep it nice and level I can get the carb out of here if I push that under there I can get this whole thing off here with this actual petrol tank like that, and if I keep the whole thing level nothing should spill out, but now I've got access to this bottom bolt, I can easily undo that and drain this into something so I can reuse this fuel later on I can get full access to this carb here and I can service this up and make sure it primes before I put it back as well I've just got this full thing outside, I think what I'm going to do I'm going to remove this here, this actual fuel line here and take that off there and get some pliers and grab that be able to slide that down there and this whole fuel line should just pull off like that so if I get an old bolt like that as well screw that in the end that should save all that fuel from falling out of there as well and that's not leaking anymore, I can keep that separate and see how that just stops that leaking out the bottom of there, that old bolt, I can keep that separate now in the garage not wasting all that fuel, so I did put a fair amount in here just to try this and now I can see this whole car which is absolutely filthy, I mean it's no really wonder that this isn't uh, running as it should in, in such a bad condition so I'm going to spend five minutes with an air compressor and an old brush and just clean all this up on the outside you must clean the outside of all this before you actually do anything else because if you take this apart and try and blow it off all, all that's going to happen is you're going to blow all the dirt inside all these little holes inside the car So 
so not 100% perfect but I'm sure you'll agree it's a lot cleaner and tidier so it's in a good condition where we can actually take this ball off now and service the inside of this carb as it stopped raining for five minutes I'm just going to take the time with an air compressor I'm just going to block all these holes off here and I'm going to blow all this dirt off around here as well I might just zip this flywheel off so I can give this a really good clean underneath as well but uh, make sure you block these holes off as well if you're going to do this just before you actually go around and uh, get all this dirt off so as I do on a lot of videos I'm going to test this Ryobi out and see if you can remove this actual top bolt here without having to get my actual electric actual corded let's give it a go I've got an impact socket on here I'm going to see if this is uh, good enough to undo this top bolt here you can see there that's zipped straight off that can save you absolutely hours and from in here I can see this actual flywheel key and we can check that this flywheel key actually looks correct as well you might think there that that's broken but these Tecumseh ones are slightly different you can see there they've got a little like an L shape and it goes down but I'm going to take this flywheel off I'm just going to pull this off from underneath if I'm honest I'm just going to take it off so I can clean underneath there and I can see exactly what's going on so I've just cleaned all that up as you can probably see I'm going to refit this flywheel now the actual fattest part the widest part of this actually slides down this crankshaft first and it helps if you make sure that this is turned away from the actual magnet as well so the actual ignition coil here isn't grabbing hold of the magnet so I'm going to slide the widest part of this key down this shaft here like that and I'm going to put the flywheel back on like that and line everything up you can see everything's nice and neat I want to get the actual head again and this nut here I'm going to pop this back on here I'm going to tighten this back up and that way I know everything's alright I know all the flywheel keys are alright never ever hit the top of the crank by the way I'm trying to get this actual flywheel off because you will actually hurt the threads in here and this will never re-bolt back on so I'm going to put that wash back on I'm going to put this back on again be real careful doing these sort of things make sure you don't get anything cross threaded especially if you're gonna zip this up with an impact so you want to make sure at least once that you tighten it kind of down by hand a bit at least halfway and back up make sure it's all threaded correctly that's as tight as I need that to be I know everything's clean and tidy I know the flywheel keys correct and I've got everything uh, nice and clean to work on as well now so I can try and uh, get this cab in bits and we'll service this carb up. I've actually noticed in the garage as well one of the linkages when I've taken the carb off the one I unhooked has actually come off from here now I think it was on the top one here on this governor arm but because I've taken photographs I'll be able to look back and make sure it goes in exactly the right place but you can see it's all uh, becoming nice and clean to work on as well there's a few bits of dirt left on it but it's not uh, it's not going to be immaculate but you can see it's beginning to take shape so let's get this carb serviced before I start with this car I'm just going to put something clean on the bench, I'll clean the bench off I'm just going to put something relatively clean down on here and it also stops any little bits running away as well if they drop out of the car I always kind of do some, this over something, I never like to do these outside so we'll just lay that relatively flat and we're going to take this off, you see I haven't had to take off any of this yet I haven't had to take off this whole part, I don't see any reason to take all this apart the only bits I want to get into really uh, in this bowl here I mean, you can see how easily I could get this apart and I may do that actually now I've got this actual part off the lawnmower so it's just a bit easier to do this and try and unbolt the whole thing while it's off, actually off the machine rather than still on it so I'm going to start with this I'm going to be ultra careful with this I've got an 11mm spanner here and I'm going to be so careful with this because I've had so many problems with doing this in the past I'm actually going to do undo the rest of it just with my fingers as well and these threads and these little bolts that go in the bottom of here really are soft so just be ultra careful with this thread on here as well and when you take this apart as I'm going to do now keep your eye on the actual float ball gasket because it's sometimes a little bit fiddly to get back in you see I've had it before when it's been all broken off and I've had all sorts of problems with this and it's actually sat nicely in there so I'm going to leave that well alone I'm going to pull this pin out of here get some long rows pliers you can see why you want to do this on a, a mat or something really keep all your bits together I want to get a little tub for all my parts and drop them in there like that 
So now this actual float can lift off. And see there, you still got the actual needle in there. I'm going to put that in there. Still got the needle attached. Let's just have a look at how that goes. Yeah, that just pushes in. I'm going to try and keep all that together if I can. And that's a nice simple setup as well. There's no springs or anything like that to remove in here. And I've decided I'm actually going to remove this from here, so we'll take that off as well. Just back that off there. Use my finger on the other side, it should just drop off. And do the same again here. And take that off. Make sure we keep everything nice and together. Just pop that back through there. Do the same on the other side. And put that one. Keep the box nice and neat as well. I'll put that there. And that goes at the far side. And that one there, this should come off. Which it does. Still got the gasket on, and from in here, you see, I can service the cab a little bit better. Yeah, so this little bolt goes through the actual bottom of here, and it goes into this cab here, which is where it threads from. You can see there's actually tiny little holes in here as well. I'm not sure if you can just see that there. There's a tiny little hole just in the bottom of here as well. So all this needs to be immaculately clean, not just the cab. You need to do all these parts as well, and everything that goes near it. So normally I could hook an allen key in here and I could just push this other jet down here I'm not sure that's going to drop down at the minute I might just try that that normally drops out as that jet with an allen key so let's, let's just give that a little try normally you can poke like an allen key in the top and push this down and get the whole thing out this one seems to be permanently in there so I can still clean that I can still get in there and I can still blow all that out with the compressor so what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to actually undo these two screws now. As I know some of these to come says without them in, it won't prime. So there must be a hole in there that needs to be clean. So we'll take these out. I'll keep them left and right. I'm not exactly sure if there is on this one, but I'm going to take that out. There's actually tiny, tiny little holes in here. You can probably just see. There's ones inside here and there's ones inside here. And there's also normally on the back of here... When you open up this actual butterfly valve here, there's little ones normally inside here as well, just in these walls that you can hardly see, they're like little pinholes. So all you need to do with this is get some carb spray like this and just give this whole thing a, a really good clean out. I'm just going to fill this whole thing up with uh, a load of this carb spray and I'm going to leave it for five minutes, probably while I make a cup of coffee. And I'm going to blow the whole thing through with the compressor. I'm going to put the screws back in. I'm going to connect it back up to the actual petrol tank. And I'm going to make sure that this actually primes through this little hole on the back of here before I put this back on the mower. So I'm going to give this whole thing a spray up. I can see straight through this, but there's, there's always some real little intricate bits in carburetors that you might not think do too much. But if you just clean it all out and give it a really good clean out everywhere you can see and leave it for a few minutes and blow this out with the compressor, Kind of nine times out of ten I don't have a problem with the compressor. One thing to make sure of with this little device here as well. Make sure this opens as well. If you have an SV150. Sorry, don't mean to swear. I hate these SV150 engines. If you have an SV150 mount field one. And you've tried everything. You still can't get it to stop revving up and down. This little spring here. If you take the actual carb apart, if you can be bothered, this you'll find a lot of them break on the SV150s, and this actually doesn't do its job. So I'm going to spray all this out, and I bring that airline in here. I'm just going to blow all this out and get it as clean as I can. So this has had a good few minutes to uh, kind of absorb all this carb cleaner in here as well. So I'm just going to grab this carb now. I'm just going to clean all this off. Move all your other bits out of the way so you don't blow them out the tub. And I'm just going to blow, in, blow in all here. I'm going to blow all down these little holes here. All, everywhere I can see it. And just make sure that this thing's actually really blown out as well as you can do it. You can probably see why it's so important to clean these on the outside before you start doing them on the inside as well. I've actually got this part here, just be really careful with this washer as well. Don't lose this little rubber washer off here, but you're going to want to give this a, a good blast out as well. Make sure these holes are clean, give it a bit of a spray up as well. 
just to make sure everything's going to get some cleaner in it and it can get any old fuel out of here. And these little tiny holes in here are absolutely essential to the starting and running of these Tecumseh's. So everything's done there, everything's cleaned out and tidy. I'm going to put this back together. And you must make sure as well, give this a spray in the actual bowl. Make sure there's no dirt left in the bottom of here. You can see all these little bits in here, look at that dirt there. All that there. Don't want any of that going back through the cab, so give that a clean out as well. And make sure it's completely clean and tidy and dry as well before you put all this back together. Okay, now I'm going to put this back together. Now this is super important, if you remember exactly how this went on the actual mower, what you need to do is make sure you get this the right way around so you know where everything went and you also want to make sure you've got good access to this adjuster valve here as well so you can adjust this should you need to when you get this mower running. So if you remember I have this part on here, this part goes back through here so I can remember how this went on this mower, it went like that and that's how it goes back on the engine. So what I need to do next now I know I've got this right way around is I want to put this bowl back on here I'm going to pop this on here and I'm going to kind of put this to the front so I can hopefully get a little bit more access even a little bit further around because the plastic really does get in the way and hopefully I mean I'm going to guess him I'll have a little bit more access but before I think it was at the other side now this is critical this is super important because if you want to buy one of these parts I reckon these are at least a tenner and you probably won't find one at the minute on eBay so when you go to put this back together this is uh, the most important part you can get right. Make sure you just do this finger tight and you can't go slowly enough doing this. Make sure that it's actually threaded perfectly and there's nothing, there's no resistance on the thread and you get this back in like this and then without overdoing it get a spanner. We'll just take this and I'm just going to nip this up. You don't want this too tight that will do any more than that and you risk actually stripping this thread and breaking actually this little gasket under here, this little seal that stops the fuel flowing. So that's back together I can now put these parts back on here as well and I'm going to put the screws back in and I'm going to connect this back up to the petrol tank I'm going to see if this actually primes when I press this little primer button on here. If it doesn't I'm not going to go any further with this car because there's obviously a, an internal problem I'm sure it'll be okay but it must prime out of there for this actual engine to start. So the uh, eagle eyed amongst you will realise that I forgot to put the float ball back on. So I like a bit of honesty but because I've not stripped this thread, I've not over tightened it, it shouldn't be too much of a job to get it undone and put it back on. So it's super important as I've just said not to strip this thread on here just in case you're a bit simple like me and you forget to actually put the float ball back on. So let's get this here. This actual pin's all stayed nice and connected in here so I'm just going to pop that pin back in there like that, drop the needle down. In fact I'll just give that a bit of a spray up as well, make sure that's all nice and clean. So I'll pop that in there and drop that in there. You drop the actual needle in first it really helps. I'm going to put this pin back across here. If the needle does drop off like that, I'm having a bit of a job getting this pin back through here. If it does drop back off, you can just slide it back on like that. You can just slide it in this little hole here. And if you can actually keep it tilted like that towards you, it's hard to really show on camera, but if you keep it tilted towards you like that, it actually keeps this actually on here and you can just drop it back in this hole. It makes it a little bit easier. But I'm having a bit of a, a struggle getting this pin back through here. I can't lie, it's getting on my nerves a little bit. So there we go that's back in there. And what I like to do is I like to just visually look at this and make a, a look at this actual needle make sure it's going up and down make sure this pin's sat in the middle as well if this actual doesn't go up and down in the middle of here if this needle doesn't go up and down you can see there in this little gap there if that doesn't go up and down you will have uh, flooding issues it'll just keep filling up with fuel and it'll be pouring out the carburetor so now I've got that back on and I've not forgotten what I'm doing completely I can get this again, I'm going to put this on the same way again, I want to tighten this up, I just want to listen to make sure the actual float goes up and down, you can hear all the float still going up and down, so once again I'm going to really carefully put this bolt back in here, just carefully tighten this up. I 
and that's all you need to do to service this carburetor on a come sail or more so that's all clean and tidy now there should be no dirt in there and it should all prime properly before I forget I'll put these two back in here I'm not sure all these come sails need these screws in but I can guarantee you it does on some I've even seen some uh, people at race go-karts that have come say engines as well that have struggled with this on the bigger size carbs and they couldn't believe it when I'd seen the video and said they got it going because they simply put this screw back in so next I'm just going to put this back in here if you remember this went through here it actually had this not on the back of here oh just a little bit fiddly and a bit time consuming to do really just a bit faffy it's not too bad get that in there like that that's started so that's not too bad I'll do the same at the other side before I tighten it up this is really difficult to do with this on the actual mower so get that in there tighten that up just get that started on there and I'll nip these back up you don't really need to see that but you can see this whole thing's going back together I'm just going to get a actual uh, spanner there and we'll just tighten this part back up and that's the whole part back together much easier to do actually off the mower just check this primer bulb as well you can kind of get a feel of if it's going to work or not there's no splits in it it appears to retract nice and quick so the rubber don't seem really old either so that should work just fine right so what I want to do next is I want to connect up this actual petrol tank here my missus would kill me if she sees this on a tumble dryer anyway <laughs> connect this here back up to the carb which is connected here I'm going to do that I'm going to make sure there's no leaks around this actual bowl as well no leaks from the bottom I'm going to see if when I prime it if it actually gets some little uh, bit of fuel out of here and if it does we can put this back on the mower so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just nip this actual fuel line off here to stop it leaking out I'm going to take this bolt out of here just to unscrew that back out so I'm not getting fuel absolutely everywhere that's come out there and you can see it's not leaking out at the minute now I'm going to connect that back up there I'm just going to push this onto here and remove this clip now this is kind of gravity fed so I'm going to put this back on this dry here and that should release enough fuel into this carb what you need to do is keep everything level and what I really want to see here is when I prime this I want to see some fuel coming out of the back of here okay so it may be my memory I might just be getting old but when I press the primer I don't see any fuel come out of that little hole but I do see it come out of this main jet if you look hopefully you can just see if you look at the top there I'm actually getting some fuel coming through there and it is actually priming something I'm actually getting some fuel going through and you can see here it's actually dropping out at the bottom of here as well so the fuel is actually getting from this actual tank here which I've got sat on the tumble dryer it's going from the carb and it's dropping down here you can just see in here in a minute when it gets through you can just see it starting to drip there so there is some fuel getting through there and that should be enough to prime this engine to start that so I'm pretty convinced really the last one I did it came out of that tiny little hole there but I do have the primer bulb work I can see that it's pushing the fuel through there so for now make sure there's some fuel going through there for now I'm happy that the carbs clean hopefully you can see that I'm not sure how much you can see on the camera I've only got my little camera screen to look at you see but hopefully you can see that when I actually lift this tank up here and we actually prime this you can hopefully see there's some fuel going through there and it's actually dropping out quite a lot out the bottom of here as well so I'm gonna wait for a few minutes I'm gonna make sure that when I'm not priming this I'm gonna make sure when I'm not priming it that there isn't still fuel running through the carb and down and out of here because there shouldn't be any fuel if this is level there shouldn't be any fuel really going from the tank through the carb and out of the bottom I want to make sure nothing's leaking nothing's leaking on the bottom there because I've really taken care of this bolt so I'm happy with that I'll leave that for a few minutes maybe try this back on this mower so with that sat there for a few minutes now I can see in here that this is still nice and dry there's nothing coming out of here without me priming it so I'm happy that nothing's just leaking straight through the carb I'm happy the needle's doing its job I'm happy the float's set up right I'm still not convinced 
if I'm perfectly honest that I shouldn't be getting some fuel out of that little hole there but I know I'm getting some fuel once I press the primer button just wanted to try and show you in here hopefully I can just steady it up you see that at the top that that is actually priming so might be slightly different to the last one I did I don't know leave me a comment if you know any more than me on that but I'm happy that this is actually uh, priming I'm happy that's uh, doing exactly what it should be doing so just before I start to rebuild this more I'm just going to clean off all these other parts you probably see here that uh, this air filter I mean it's just ruined in it I mean I might as well go in the bin so I'm going to need another one of those so I'm going to bin that let's forget about that I'm just going to clean off all these other parts there's a lot of dirt on the back of this petrol tank as well here and that's it just clean all this uh, crud off the back of here spend five minutes doing that then when I take it back in the garage every part I've got to put back on is nice and clean well just while I was out here just tidying up a bit I've just actually extracted the last of the oil out of this mower you can see here it's kind of bone dry in the bottom of there now so that's all out there I can take that in I must make myself a note as well not to try and start this without any oil in so as I mentioned outside in the garden there's one linkage here that I'm not sure exactly where it goes it came off when I unbolted the carb as I said I'm thinking I'm pretty sure it goes to this governor arm but which way around does it go you see these are the problems it could go either way around not sure upside down or whatever what I'm going to do is I'm going to look back on the photographs I took and I should have a good shot of this and I'll know exactly which hole it went in here on this arm and I think it was the top one because I looked and I'll know which way it went round as well so what I'm going to look for is this little cut out section here to see which way around it went as you can see here I've got detailed photographs here it went to that top part there you can probably just see and that's the uh, actual longer part which is there, you can see the angle, how it lines up with the photograph there you can get it exactly right and that's why it's really important that you take these photographs so I'm going to hook this back linkage on here to the top hole you can see what I'm trying to show is the angle there how it bends upwards there, that's obviously that piece there and that's why it's real, real important to take these pictures as you're going along, I'm so glad I did so I'm going to get this part, I'm going to put it through this top hole here, this governor arm and just push it through like that give it a little twist and that is exactly where it went before and I know this hooks up to the other end of the cab the other linkage below it actually goes to this part here which is the actual uh, throttle in fact I might even be able to give myself a bit more room with that I can if I put the actual uh, cable down to stop at the top on the throttle that gives me a bit more play there you can see I can move that about a bit more free got a bit more movement on there now to move that so there's only one spring here that goes to this cab if you remember that's the one I took off near the beginning of this video so I'm going to hook that back on I'm going to put this car back on I think what I'm going to do first is drop the petrol tank on and connect up this fuel line because this fuel line it sits at the back here this actually sits at the back which is another pain to get to so I need to hook this on first before I actually put this car back on this mower so I'm just looking to see where this linkage connects if you look at that hole there it's slightly more worn I can't find a good photograph of exactly where that one went so I'm going to use an educated guess I'm going to hook that on there like that and back through if I remember rightly it did go on there anyway we will hook that back through there and you can see here everything starts to go back together I could bolt all that back in there but I really want to get this petrol tank back on here first I've just noticed on the back here that this was actually tangling with this spring so I've pulled this linkage here I've pulled this linkage in front of the spring make sure nothing's getting obstructed I'm going to hook that in there the front of this cab and everything's in position everything can move it looks like it's in the right place everything can move freely like it should nothing's obstructing the spring or anything like that so this petrol tank actually sits on the back of the recoil cover so I can't actually fit that at the minute but I can drop it in position and I can get this back actually on the carb before I bolt the carb in so I'm going to do that now take that on there push that in the back of this carb here slide the clip up so it can't leak and that's all in position if you keep this tank nice and straight in the carb relatively straight you shouldn't have too much fuel spillage either so I'm just going to get some long nose pliers I'm going to grab this little clip and I'm going to slide it right to the top to make sure that this actual fuel line stays on here like that and that's nice and tight and it can't leak so the next thing is to put this actual uh, inlet back on here I think I said that the long bolt went at the top and the smaller one 
I went down at the bottom so I'm going to push that back through there. This gasket's a little bit a little bit broken, not 100 percent perfect. I'm going to be real careful just putting these screws back through here. I'm going to feed them back through this gasket first like this. So I've just put this back on here and connected all this bottom part up here, this like manifold if you like. I've just noticed on here where I've put this linkage across, it's not really particularly free, can you see how it's kind of jolting this little governor arm at the back here doesn't seem to be moving freely against that so I'm not happy with that, that should move freer than that so I'm going to look back on the video I'm going to make sure I've got that in the correct hole before I go any further because this is governing the speed of the engine and although I can kind of get it to move free it's not, when I move the arm it's not particularly doing what I want it to do, you can see it's sticking so I'm going to look back on the video and make sure I've got this whole linkage here set up correctly and I've actually got this in the correct hole because I can kind of tell there something is uh, is wrong. I can get it to move freely, but I'm not convinced that's going to move as freely as it needs to do when this mower is just working off its own speed. So I'm going to look back on the video and see what I can see. So just have a look back at the video. I've actually got this connected up properly, and I think just with taking this actual uh, linkage out, it's just got slightly bent. If you look now, you can see. I've just pulled this governor arm forward a little bit it was just catching on the actual main block maybe I've caught something with that so I just pulled it forward a little bit and I've just pushed it up a little bit there and you can see now when the arm moves this does what it's supposed to do it goes all the way to the back and when I let go of it it springs to the front without it doing that you're going to have running problems which is why I didn't want to go any further filming the video so that's exactly doing what it's supposed to do as you can see with this little thing that springs like that that must do that with that there, I can now put this top bracket back on here. So I'll just take the screws we've kept and I'll just uh, pop that in there like that. Make sure everything still works as it should. Nothing's getting caught. And put that little screw back in there like that. Probably see there, I've just put a little bit of WD-40 down the hole there. And what I'll find is the thread normally just sits in nice like that. And you can actually get this whole thing threaded and I can bolt this all back on. So what you need to do when you've put this back together is you need to make sure that these arms move freely like I've just shown. You need to make sure that this throttle works as well. You can see how this lever is pointing over this side. If I actually go up here and push that up to the top, even with these old uh, cables you'll see this is all moving here. And you can set this, you could actually get a bit of uh, adjustment by undoing this little screw under here and moving this actually backwards and forwards. It was running quite fast before you'd probably get a different setting as well if you undid that spring there and put it in one of these different holes you'd probably get a slightly different speed setting so that's something we could play with but if everything else is set up right I don't see the need to do that so we can put that back through here I've got this actual ignition coil back through this little gap where it goes. So I'm going to have real good fun with this recoil cover because where it's supposed to bolt on the actual head I noticed earlier it's actually broken off it's actually supposed to go through there so I'm supposed to have two it's screws or bolts that go through there which we can only get one on so that's annoying that must have taken some bashing to get off and also I can't really get it right on the back either because it's split here the actual thing split as I showed before and this one here is actually worn away I don't know what's happened to that so I might need another part but it can't be any worse than it was when we tried it last time so what I'm going to do is I'm going to refit this air filter box put the exhaust back on, I'm going to just somehow try and bolt that back on for now and we'll just see if this mower runs but it's definitely not right I'm going to have to think of a, a way to either uh, adapt this or get another part or maybe even get another head and another recoil for this but we'll see but for now I'm just going to put this air filter back on we'll take this outside and we'll try it and just see if it primes and runs so we'll just have a go at bolting this exhaust back on, that should be pretty straightforward really just pop that in there start these off really simple make sure they're all lined up and just get them sort of started off and we'll just uh, zip these up and that should stay nice and tight then and just pull that on again and see I'll just get a flat screwdriver I'll just bend these tabs back over here like they should be. They're really close to breaking those. I don't think they're going to do a real lot, but just for good measure, I'll just put them back over like that. Should be an exhaust guard on there as well. That's missing as well. And then I'm going to fit this uh, 
air filter box back on as well. We'll pop that back on there. That just drops in there. We'll take these two screws out of here. Put these through this air filter box here. And pop these back on. All the time you're doing all this sort of stuff, make sure everything still moves about freely as well. You don't want anything uh, not moving. Anything not moving like that, you're going to have real problems. So we'll pop that one back in that far side there. And that's the awkward one to do, so we'll do that first. Okay, so that's on there. What a pain that was. It always takes a bit of doing, does that. But once again, make sure, because there's not a lot of clearance, you can see. Make sure that all of this is free. There's only a small gap down there to get this on here. So that's all that back together. I'll we'll put this cover back on. Of course, I need to buy a filter for that as well. So we'll put that back on there. I need two hands to do that. We'll drop this cover back on here and we'll give this lawnmower a go once I put some oil back in it. Right, so I've got this recoil cover on a little bit better. I've bolted it on a few different places. It still doesn't pull over easy, but I've just reconnected this spark plug lead, so I'm really not sure if it's going to start or not. You'll see what I see. Plenty of fuel in there. I'm really hoping that this does prime now. So let's give this a few goes. Put this on to choke. It just don't pull over very nice, which is a bit strange. Right, so I've got it running again. It's still running too fast. So I've just quickly altered this cable here, undone this little screw here and pulled this back. When you put it onto choke, this lawnmower now starts up a lot easier, but it still runs on full power. See, you can't slow it down. If I put it back onto choke, it starts up. So, the job for tomorrow is to get this running at the correct speed. So that's been a fun and game sort of day. We've got this serviced and we've got it uh, running, but it's only running full speed. I don't know why, so we'll have to check those linkages and those springs tomorrow. Make sure everything's moving about exactly as it should. And we'll uh, see what we can do with this cow to make it run at the right speed as well. But at least we've got it serviced and we've got this back together and we have got it running, so we're halfway there. Right, so it's next morning now. It's actually uh, really cold out this morning. There's ice on the garage roof and stuff. I've just done a bit of research into why this might be running too fast. I'm going to try a few things this morning. But first of all, while it's freezing cold, I've not run this. I want to see if this still starts up nice and easy when we put it onto choke. Because I found out when I moved this yesterday, I seem to get it to choke quite a bit easy. So I'm going to put it onto choke and I'm going to pull it over. And it'll probably run too fast still, but I'm hoping that it starts still because I don't want any starting issues with it. And then I'm going to try a few things to see if I can uh, actually make it run the right speed that I've just researched a bit. So I'm going to put it on choke. Let's see if we can get it started. Because half of the battle with this is pulling it over. It doesn't pull over easy. So I could do with putting it onto choke and kind of pulling it over once. Right, well that's a great start. That saves me standing there pulling it over really hard all day. So that's definitely been worth cleaning the cab and just adjusting that cable a little bit. It must just be choking properly inside. So I'm going to show you a few things you can do to slow down a, to come say a lawnmower and I'm also going to tell you why it might not slow down as well which is what I'm slightly concerned about. So I've just looked back at some of my own videos. I've also been on a, a chap called Bruce Pender, P-E-N-D-E-R. I'm sure some of you have followed him on YouTube. He's got one on uh, a Tecumseh set up and he said this plate at the top here you see where these two screws go in below the air filter they're actually like cut out there so you can move this plate across each way to adjust the speed slightly I've got mine all the way across that way which would mean the spring is actually stretched I think it's to the minimum really I don't think it makes a huge difference but there is 
I'm just trying to work it out if it's that way, the spring will be too far that way. If I moved it more, where that little gap is there, it would actually make the spring tighter. So there's that. Um, the other thing is, obviously this cable here is really for the choke and the throttle. I'm not too bothered about the, the throttle actually working as long as it goes on and off choke. But the next thing is this governor arm under here. You can set this governor arm up occasionally what happens with these especially with it being old which is something I'm concerned about is if this governor um, actually breaks inside this crankcase because these do break sometimes from time to time so I know I've got everything moving exactly as I want it to move so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure this is at the lowest height here so I can't get my feet under it I'm going to start this up and because there's no actual brake on this I don't have to stand there and hold the handle so I just have to be very careful not to chop my toes off so if you're doing this um, just be very careful with what you're doing and I'm going to just manually move this governor with my finger and see if this lawnmower will just run at a slower speed. I imagine it's opening up all the way that way and then it's coming back and it's just opening up too fast. I'm going to try and move this about is what I'm saying when I've got the lawnmower running see if I can hold it with my finger at the correct speed to start with. Right let's give this a go. So I'm going to start this up and I'm just going to gently move this with my finger I wonder if this will start without priming it. Right, so it does adjust the speed as I thought it would, so that, that probably tells me that this governor arm's working inside, although I can't be 100% sure. So I'm going to actually just undo this little governor arm, I'm going to try and uh, just move it into a different position and see what effect it has. Okay, so I've had to fiddle about with this. It's kind of opposite to what you'd think. To undo this screw here, what you've got to do is go the opposite way you'd think. You actually go clockwise and it backs it right out. And it's all about getting this angle right. I've obviously gone a bit too far the other way, so it's a bit of a trial and error job is this one, but I've got it running and it's fairly even at slow revs, which I didn't think it would do, so that's given me some hope. So I'm going to take this off again. I'm just going to move this governor arm over a little bit more so obviously I want it running quicker than that but I'd rather have it running too slow for now and adjust it the other way rather than it running flat out so at least I've got some hope and it is making a difference Right, so there's a bit of spitting and popping and stuff, but I'm just going to try something without actually adjusting that. I'm actually just going to put this cable slightly back that way just to see if I can open this throttle up a little bit further. Um, don't forget, I've not got the air filter on either, so it won't be running 100%, but it's certainly getting there, isn't it? Bit by bit. So I'm just going to move this cable back a little bit. I'm just going to put a little bit less white showing on there. Just see if we can speed it up a little bit using that method. Right, I've moved that back a little bit. What I don't want to do is make it so the choke don't work properly. If I don't this too much, there's a chance this choke might not open up inside the carb. And no, another bad thing about these carbs is you can't see inside the carb to see if the actual choke is opening and closing properly either. So let's give this another go. What I want it to do is start up easily because this recoil is a, a real mess. I'll probably have to get another one to be honest with you. And um, I want it to start on choke and I just want it to run at a reasonable speed. I'm not bothered about the actual... Uh, adjustment of the speed. I just want it to run at a reasonable speed and not stall after a few minutes, so let's try it. At least it's 
that easy on the truck. Not to prime it at all since I've been starting it every few minutes. So I'm going to let that lawnmower sit there for around half an hour and I'll refilm it again which will be in just a minute on the video once it's sort of cold I'm going to try this with a choke on obviously it don't run 100% perfect I can't get all the throttle working but I think this lawnmower is around 25 year old probably a bit more so to say we've got it running as well as that and somebody could use that I'm quite happy with that I don't think there's going to be much profit in this lawnmower but I've just got it just to do the repairs on the Tecumseh so you can all see uh, a few little things hopefully that's helped anyone out who's got one that's running too fast particularly because that little governor arm trick really helped and the combination of just setting up the actual cab with the throttle cable as well so I'm going to give this lawnmower a clean up I'm, I'm going to have to do something with the actual uh, recoil cover it still doesn't pull over too easy but I'm not going to spend too long messing about with that in fact what I think I'm going to do with this lawnmower is I'm going to give this to somebody I know once um, somebody asks me for a lawnmower I'm just going to give them this one just um, as a bit of a freebie. I don't think it's really worth selling. The recoil cover doesn't go on 100%. It's a little bit difficult to pull over. Um, and it's a very old lawnmower. It's a bit more of a project was this video. I'm going to clean it up and I'll show you the end results as well. And we'll try starting this lawnmower up again once again from cold. I'm just making sure it runs evenly. And I didn't see that cutting out. That was running for around 5 or 6 minutes. So I'll probably leave it later on in the day for around 10-15 minutes. And make sure that it doesn't cut out at all. But 
I'm really happy with that. The drive works as well. And if someone's just uh, maybe purchased the first house and have got a really long strip of grass at the back, it'll do a really nice job cutting and striping it. So I'm going to sharpen the blade up as well. So I'm just cleaning this up a bit. There's a few reasons I don't really want to ask for much money for it. I'll just do an honest listing. Because this is split here, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to get a, a washer and put it round it and then rebolt it and it'll hold it on. I mean, the thing ain't going to come off. It's it just moves about a little bit. I don't really want to try and sell this because I'm going to have problems. People are going to want to bring it back and stuff. So if I make my money back on this, I'll maybe myself a five. At least I've had a chance to film a video for everybody. And it hopefully it's helped a few people out. This is uh, electronic. If you look on this, it's a Comte Forstro made in Italy. It's a BVS 153 for anybody who wants to know. So I've just had a, a bit of a bodge fix if you like. I've just put a couple of washers on here. And you can see now the whole thing don't actually move so it should be okay for a bit and if I sell it obviously I'll just tell someone they're gonna need at some point either to re-bolt this back on I've got this self a new recoil cover so let's just pop that back on there um, and basically the whole thing don't move about giving this a good tighten up but I'm sure over time it'll come slack but at least now when you put it on to choke it starts up first or second pull so you're not over pulling this recoil so they should get a bit of use out of that before it actually needs replacing. So let's give this one final test before we go. The uh, Empress Strikes Back. I've been thinking of that all the way along. That's the best pun I could think of. The Empress Strikes Again would be good as well. So let's give this a go. We'll give this uh, a bit of a prime and start it one last time. Uh, I'm going to probably just put this on uh, Facebook and see if any of my friends actually want to come and pick this up. We'll have a tidy up. So, actually, do with the, the cables just cable tie in there and I've got a little handle thing here you can actually hook this through so it's not always hanging around so I'm going to prime it it's been sat around 30 minutes 35 minutes Just put this on to choke and hopefully this will start up as good as it did before and keep running go the empress really does strike back so there we go we've eventually got this running quite nicely now and the self-drive works and everything like that as i've said i'm probably just going to give this lawnmower away to somebody that i know but um if you've made it to the end of this video thanks very much it's been an absolute epic it's been a pain and i hope it's been a, a valuable resource for anybody looking to repair lawnmowers for profit of not starting with a tecumseh engine like this you want to be starting with a briggs 35 classic engine you can find all the uh, details you'll need to get started repairing lawnmowers for profit on repairlawnmowersforprofit.com. I have my own parts store on there and I'd really appreciate you taking a look at the website as well. So thanks for watching. I'm going to leave some video cards to my other channel which is Stamp is Random Reviews and Tutorials in this corner of the screen here. A subscribe button here. If you haven't already done that, I'd really appreciate you hitting the subscribe button and there'll be some random video at this side. So I hope you've enjoyed it. It's good to be back and I'll see you again next time. And as always, thanks for watching.